This training module covers the FMS basic flight planning, landing initialization on the Embraer E-2 aircraft. This presentation is Honeywell proprietary information and is subject to export restrictions and intended for personal use only. This material was developed by the Honeywell Flight Technical Services Organization. For more pilot training and videos, go to pilots.honeywell.com. The landing initialization, or the task of perfing the landing, should be completed after the crew gets the destination weather. Landing pages can be accessed through the perf index and from the descent page. Normally, after the aircraft is airborne and a landing runway has been activated in the FMS, the pilot will access the landing pages using the landing prompt found on the active flight plan page, line 6 right. If the landing init has been completed, the landing page will be shown with told computed landing speeds if the told APM option has been enabled. If told is not enabled, dashes will be shown for each V-speed. From the landing page, the landing init page can be accessed via the prompt at line select key 6 left. The landing init page provides for entry of specific information for landing and go-around calculations in addition to landing performance initialization. To perf the landing, the pilot starts by verifying the runway heading on line 1 left. This value is taken from the FMS navigation database, but pilot entries are accepted. If a runway is not defined, the display will show dashes. The aircraft landing weight is displayed on one right and should also be verified. The value will be either in pounds or kilograms, depending on the aircraft personality module setting and where the aircraft is based. If the landing weight shown is above the maximum landing weight, it will be displayed in reverse video, and an exceeds max landing weight scratch pad message will be shown. The landing temperature is displayed in both Celsius and Fahrenheit at line 2 left and should be entered after the pilot listens to ATIS or gets the landing field temperature value. Pilot entry of Fahrenheit preceded by a backslash is permitted. Enter only Celsius or Fahrenheit, but not both. Wind direction and speed are shown on line 2 right. The default values are dashes until the pilot enters the winds obtained from the ATIS or landing field weather information broadcast. After the landing field winds are entered, the headwind and tailwind component speeds are shown with directional arrows on 3 right. Values are rounded to the nearest knot. The wind component should be checked to make sure that winds are within acceptable limits. The landing flap setting is displayed on line 3 left. The pilot can toggle between full flaps and flaps 5 by pressing line select key 3 left. If the aircraft is 2.5 nautical miles from the destination and the actual flap position does not match the flap selection on the landing init page, a check landing flap scratch pad message will appear. The approach type speeds are displayed on line 4 left. Selecting the OR prompt at 4 right displays the approach type speeds page that permits selection of various approach speeds. The approach type speed selections include non-precision approach and CAT1, CAT2 and CAT3, steep approach, and auto land. The currently active approach speed is displayed in large font with ACT for active in parentheses after the speed. Select the return prompt to go back to the landing init page. The landing field ice condition selection and prompt are shown on line 5 left. To change the selection, use the line select key 5 left to toggle between yes and no. The active selection is shown in a large cyan font. If temperature compensation has been enabled, the temp comp prompt will be displayed at 5 right. Temperature compensation technique is covered in a separate training webinar. To go to the landing page, select the landing prompt at line select key 6 right. The landing page permits the entry of various landing V speeds that are used to place speed targets directly onto the PFD airspeed tape. If landing speeds are not inserted or confirmed and the aircraft is in cruise with an arrival activated, 
a check landing speeds scratch pad message will be displayed. Landing speeds consist of reference speed, approach speed, approach climb speed, and final segment speed. The landing speeds are confirmed and activated by the crew by selecting the line select keys 1 left through 4 left. Note that this confirming action must be completed for speeds to post on the airspeed tape. The landing flap setting is displayed at 2 right when a flap setting exists. Press line select key 5 right to view the approach speed selections. The Approach Speeds page is used to enter speed limits for the various flap positions, as well as restrictions that are used to compute speed targets during the approach phase of flight. Once the approach speeds are confirmed, the actual landing flap value will be shown on line 5 right. The green dot or fixed speed selections are shown on line 1. The active selection is displayed in large font, in this case fixed. When the selection is fixed, the various speeds are shown on the bottom portion of the page. Pushing line select key 1 right toggles between the selections. When green dot is selected, line 2 displays the default green dot additive of 0. The range for the green dot additive is 0 to 99 knots and can be set by the pilot by typing a value into the scratch pad and line selecting it up to line select key 2 left. Select the landing prompt at 6 left to go back to the landing page. Press line select key 6 right to view the go around limit page selection. The go around limit page allows the pilot to set the VNAV capture altitudes for all engines or engine out condition, bank limit for engine out condition, and speed and height limits. The go around speed limit for the clean configuration is shown on line 1. Pilot entry is permitted. Entering delete returns the default value, which is set by the aircraft's personality module. The AFE limit on line 2 stands for above field elevation. This is the two engine go around limit height in feet. At this altitude, the FMS will start to target the climb speed schedule that was either manually set by the pilot during the takeoff per finit or the default value. The FMS will usually start with the climb speed limit, such as 250 knots below 10,000 feet, but it could target the missed approach holding or speed constraint target that is set by an active procedure. Pilot entries are permitted in this field. Deleting this value sets the height to the default value, which is defined by the aircraft personality module. The VNAV capture altitude in feet above field elevation for a two-engine go-around is displayed on line 3. At this altitude, the FMA will switch to flight level change and target the climb speed limit, such as 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Pilot entry is permitted. Deleting the go-around VNAV capture altitude sets the height to the default value, which is defined by the aircraft personality module. The go around, one engine out, VNAV capture height, and single engine bank limit are displayed on line 4 and can be set by the crew. At the VNAV capture altitude, the flight director will switch to flight level change and the FMS will target the engine out climb speed of V2 plus 10. The default bank limit for single engine is 15 degrees of bank but can be modified by the pilot. Deleting either value resets the defaults as defined in the aircraft personality module. This concludes the E2 FMS basic flight planning lesson for landing initialization procedures. For more information on Honeywell products and services, go to www.honeywell.com.